Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, the place for blade lovers to learn about knives and hear from the makers, manufacturers, and reviewers that make the knife world go round. I'm Bob DeMarco, and coming up, we're going to take a look at Cold Steel's brand new giant uh, folder. Uh, we're going to take a look at the Dagger Vendetta. Very excited about that. And great small, medium fixed blade knives. Plus, it's finally here, the collaboration knife with Hogtooth. Coming up. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome back to the show. Uh, my favorite comment from last week was uh, plain and simple right at the end of Thursday Night Knives. It was Cold Steel Collector 808 saying, Bob D for Prez 2024. And I loved it. It's Not only did it, uh, you know, yeah, inflate the ego a bit, uh, but it made me think, yeah, this is the answer to all our problems. I've been looking, you know, I've been glancing at the news and politics and I'm like, man, we're in, we're in bad shape and things don't aren't looking better. Maybe it is up to me, um, you know, a knife in every pocket. That will be my tagline uh, for the campaign. A knife in every pocket. Bob D for Prez 2024. Thank you, Cold Steel Collector, for your comment. And everyone else who watches, participates, comments, uh, is greatly appreciated. Uh, you give me your time, I give you my time. It's great. Uh, having a good time. All right. I think uh, it's time for a pocket check. In my pocket today was the Off Grid Knives Rhino V2. Now, we just gave one of these away. Uh, on the uh, Thursday Night Knives this past week, uh, when it was suggested I should run for president, uh, we gave one of these away in Coyote and Gray Wash that was just sent to me by uh, by Off Grid Knives, and uh, I'm excited to see that going out into new hands. I love this knife. Uh, I always talk about how this is the one I recommended my dad get for my brother, and then I got jealous. I finally ended up getting one, and uh, it's a really great workhorse of a knife. And I also think it's quite a looker in a in a sense. It looks a reminds me a little bit of a Winkler. Now, it's funny, I always sort of gripe that uh, people who aren't too into fixed blades see a lot of fixed blades and say, oh, it looks like a Winkler. And I'll say, in my mind, no, that doesn't look like a Winkler. To me, this long, uh, this long drop point, uh, it's almost like a very, very long clip point. Um, uh, just to me, does evoke that. Anyway, I was carrying this today. Earlier today, went on a nice epic uh, hike maybe no it wasn't epic but it was a good like two hour hike with a buddy we caught up did some talking i brought this just in case no i just thought it would be a good knife to have on me uh walking around in the woods just in case you know anything actually came up uh to cut or carve um and i thought i might just actually like i said do some carving some just extracurricular pick up a stick while you walk and carve but it was a little more rocky rock scrambly than i thought so this was just in my pocket nice big full-size knife but easy to carry and uh it doesn't really take up much space um it was a it was a great night to have a great knife to have on me i also love the baby version of that the baby rhino is a really really cool knife also on me uh, i had uh, a light one a light fixed blade knife i had my custom kramer voodoo this is from eric kramer uh, custom knives, Ugh, man. I, I've been following him a long time uh, before I had him on the show, and then finally ended up uh, buying one of these from him. Uh, but this was the knife I, I always um, drooled over in his Instagram feed. This is the Voodoo, and it's an upswept. He calls it a Persian blade. I call it a clip point. Uh, but it's a great, very thin, uh, 154 cm hollow ground, super thin and slicey. Um, fixed blade knife you know it's not necessarily uh the the, the knife i'm going to take camping um but for a hike it was nice because it is a very capable and sharp knife and and what's more i knew where i was going to be hiking chances are this would not even be uh coming out so it was thin and light uh, didn't impede my my motion at all and it was there in case i needed it uh, but if i were going camping this would not be you know what i would take this is more of a tactical knife designed for his friends in law enforcement, uh, Eric Kramer's friends in law enforcement and military, uh, at their request for a lighter knife to fit on their LBE. Love that thing. It's 
beautiful knife. Okay, uh, next up, I had my, uh, in the hopes of of uh, getting the um, leather to to form a little bit more around the knife. That's always what I'm going for with these Jack Wolf knives, um, leather cases. I had this one in my back pocket yesterday. I mean, today. It was earlier today. It seems like it was yesterday. Uh, but it was the low drag jack. And I like to sit on these in the car with the heated seat. I think it'll imprint. Sorry, man, that might be too much information. But I, I think it'll imprint the knife in the leather more. I don't know, I'm not sure if that's true. Uh, but anyway, uh, goofy things we do. Uh, this has a beautiful uh, bulbous spear point. Love this thing with that downward rake um, edge. Really good for pull cutting, really pulling through that. And then also presents the tip nice and low for uh, this sort of uh, drag cut you might be doing in your EDC. Uh, this has gotten, a, I have found that the Jack Wolf knives have uh, done a lot of food stuff for me. In other words, they've been the knife in my pocket when I've sort of impromptu gone out to eat or something like that. And uh, it'll be my food knife. Uh, if if the meal requires only a butter knife, like I'm getting an omelet or something at the diner, then I don't need to bust that out. Sometimes I will just for fun. But if I'm getting meat, definitely, definitely, I'm I'm not using the knife they provide. And this has done uh, a lot of duty in that way. As have all of the Jack Wolf knives. Uh, oddly enough, even the Warren Cliffs. Uh, so. Um, that just goes to show when I have a slip joint in my pocket all the time, it does get used quite a bit. It's just it gets used for food. OK, uh, last up for emotional support today, I had the Vosti Raccoon on me. Uh, this is a really uh, great EDC knife, if not uh, if not very pedestrian and sort of unoffensive. That This is that's a great thing about this knife is that it's a full size knife and it's very capable. It's got an, a nearly full height, flat grind. It's very thin, very sharp, slicey, has great action, fun to fidget with. But when you look at it, and great ergonomics, by the way, but when you look at it, it's not scary, uh, though it is full size and capable. So this is a good, for me, this is a good office knife. This is a, also happens to be a good food knife. Um, this is what I find. I find that uh, I'm not even using my front right pocket knife that much anymore. Uh, the The tactical front right pocket knife for just general tasks that's now in reserve for uh you know uh, for well let me move along and just say that these things are what i pull out and cut with uh i don't know what the front is for i i think tactical use in case i need to defend myself but really it's just those are my favorite knives they get top billing in the front right pocket oh manaja okay so this has been my uh, carry today. Let me know what you were carrying. Uh, now, when I was out in the woods, I did not have the emotional support knife with me. This has been in the car. This was everything else. But, uh, you know, I didn't need four knives on me because this would have been in my back pocket where this was. So in any case, that's what I had on me. What did you have on me? Let me know. Drop it in the comments for inspiration. And uh, who knows, maybe it'll give me an excuse to go out and buy another knife. Though, I must say, uh, with efforts like the one I'm about to show you, I've been trying to be more disciplined in, in, the, um, in the knife spending and purchasing and acquiring. It's more like acquiring uh, because there's just a lot. And, um, you know, I start to feel bad about not using them. So that's a rotten segue to what's coming up. And that is that I've been talking quite a while about this uh, collaboration knife I'm doing with Hogtooth Knives. Well, it is finally in. Uh, I showed you a video two weeks ago, and then we were, had a little bit of back and forth, and then he sent it to me. And then I went away, so there was there were some things uh, getting in the way of my receiving this, but I've uh, received it, and what a beauty. We have a name for this. We uh, had a code name, just a working code name when we were talking back and forth, but uh, we have arrived at a name, and this is it. This is the, this is the first collaboration knife uh, between hogtooth knives and the knife junkie it is based on the hogtooth knives platform of this tanto that you've seen me carry uh for you know a year and a half straight carry this thing all the time i love it it's the perfect edc fixed blade platform for me it's the it's the one i carry the most and uh i went to matt and said matt 
can we do different blade shapes for this perfect knife and make it a collaboration? He said, I'd love to. And we decided on a Bowie for the first one. We sent some shapes back and forth. And then this was the one we, we arrived at. And it is a, uh, if I do say so myself, a beautiful long swedged, uh, zero ground swedge clip point with a slight recurve. Um, the, that sort of recurve, that will definitely help with cutting but it will also help with the knife lasting. That is a thin hollow ground 154 CM blade. And over time, if you carry this and use it a lot, as you sharpen it, you will sharpen through that, um, that big belly, that, that recurve, and it will maintain a beautiful and workable shape throughout its, throughout its life. So uh, it, it is not one of those uh, pain in the butt recurves. It is, it is more like the recurve you will find on a traditional slip joint. That is, uh, that is there to sharpen through, if you will. But in the meantime, uh, it cuts furiously. This knife, we are calling this the Nova One. The Nova One. Um, we have yet to decide about different uh, hand uh, handle options. This is a uh, maroon micarta. I just might choose to do this first numbered batch. These are numbered batches. And uh, then as we move forward with different blade shapes on the same platform, they will be uh, designated Nova 2, Nova 3, etc. cetera. Um, but, uh, and, and we have yet, like I said, we have yet to decide on the handles. We might just do one handle color per run. They will be numbered runs. This is a prototype. You can see it says prototype at the top. Uh, that, my logo there, the Knife Junkie logo, uh, we will uh, reduce that in size. Uh, I think it's cool. It's great for me. You know, this is mine, the pro this prototype. Um, but for the main model, we will make it a little more uh, in keeping with his stamp on this side. That hog tooth stamp is pretty cool. Uh, so probably keeping it within the flat if it if it works and if it's legible. And um yeah, here it is. It is a thing of beauty. I'm very excited. And um, I will have a full video and uh, full details on the pre-order. This will be a pre-order situation, this first Nova one, and just so I can gauge interest. So once I announce the price and uh, I will gauge interest, I will get uh, uh, find out how many people actually want it. We will make that first batch, that first numbered batch, and then we'll go from there. I don't know if we will continue with the pre-order model or not. It's uh, That is up in the air. But this is the first step, and I'm really excited. Um, I have yet to carry this. This just came into me uh, the night before we record this. So today, as we speak, uh, tonight is the first time I'm going to put this in my, in my waistband. Uh, I love it. I'm very excited about this. Uh, and I hope you are too look at that i'm just looking at it in the that profile in against that white background oh very exciting all right so here it is the nova one at long last hog tooth knives and the knife junkie still to come on the knife junkie podcast we're going to take a look at cold steel's new offering in the xl folding range and then we'll get to the state of the collection and then great small and medium fixed blade knives don't take dull for an answer. It's the Knife Junkie's favorite sign-off phrase, and now you can get that tagline on a variety of merchandise, like a t-shirt, sweatshirt, hoodie, long-sleeve tee, and more, even on coasters, tote bags, a coffee mug, water bottle, and stickers. Let everyone know that you're a Knife Junkie and that you don't take dull for an answer. Get yours at thenifejunkie.com slash dull and shop for all of your Knife Junkie's merchandise at the knifejunkie.com slash shop. You're listening to the Knife Junkie podcast. And now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. Uh, well, with SHOT Show uh, a week in the rearview mirror, um, I'm taking a look at all the different uh, articles coming up. And the, and the one I wanted to talk about here, because I talk about these quite a bit, is Cold Steel. And the Cold Steel XL folders, my, my favorite, uh, the favorite sub-collection of Cold Steel that I have, and the one that I take the most um, interest in, in sort of having a complete representation of. Not that I'm going to have all of their XL folders. Uh, and this one might 
have to uh might have to be sacrificed this is the mayhem and this is their new design this is a gsm only design and uh it it is a five and a half inch slash it depending on where you measure it a slash six inch blade it's going to come in aus 10 and uh also s35 vn it's going to have different handle colors for the different blades it's got the atlas lock and I think I will be honest, it is ham fisted design. I got to say, it does look a little ham fisted. I'm going to see if um, if having it in person or, or checking it out in person makes the difference. But I got to say, I watched the Knife, Knife Center's video uh, interview with Stickman from uh, Cold Steel GSM looking at uh, the new knives for uh, 2023. And even in the hands of uh the great and powerful david c anderson this just it just didn't look i don't know i don't know we'll have to see this might be one of those things where pictures just just don't do it uh, i want to be excited about uh, this cold steel um the the swashbuckling um blade shape looks kind of interesting it's a little intriguing with that with that uh, deep clip in the center line point uh but i don't know i i almost feel like it's going more for effect than for use and i think that with a knife this big and the, and with the um with the design uh, uh pedigree of cold steel they could come up with something that is useful and dramatic this looks like it's dramatic first it's got those three very large notched jimps in the swale on the back of the blade that look ceremonial they don't they don't look purposeful for a uh thumb engagement even if you're choked up into that uh, into that ricasso area, they also don't look like they're useful for uh, trapping. You know, if you're going to use that swill in a reverse grip to trap someone's arm or something like that, uh, you would want more jimps to bite in. So I don't know. A, a lot about this seems it, it's I don't know. It's not. It doesn't have the refined design of a demco. And and I'm not saying that uh, you have to be Andrew Demko to design an awesome large folder but i think they got part of the way with this one am i just talking too much without actually having it in hand perhaps so uh, maybe when it comes out uh it will be worth the aus 10 version to check it out i hope i'm proven wrong you know i love to be surprised i love it when people that i assume are one way surprise me and are another way uh same thing with knives and that has definitely happened and we've talked about that here so um a bitter, bittersweet release for me from Cold Steel. I wish I was over the moon about it, but we'll check it out. Uh, okay, next up from CRKT, another company I talk about a lot, but usually I cast a little shade on it for, um, well, I, I'll, I'll give it a backhanded compliment usually. I'll say, man, CRKT is awesome. Uh, the way they expose the, you know, the knife buying public to all of these different designers and makers. Uh, through their collaboration knives. They are one of the most collaboration heavy uh, production knife companies out there. And uh, and then I say, but too bad they make them in such crappy uh, materials. Um, well, here we go. These are made in America from good materials. This is Matthew Lurch and his wife, MJ Lurch, uh, both coming out with their own designs that are uh, being made in America by CRKT. This first one is the one by Matthew Lurch's wife, MJ Lurch. Now, the reason I put it that way, Matthew Lurch's wife, instead of just calling her MJ out of the gate is because we've heard the name Matthew Lurch before with a number of uh, great designs, uh, especially with CRKT, like the um, LCK, the Ruger LCK made by CRKT. Uh, one, of, one of the great uh, uh, EDC, inexpensive EDC knives from the high value EDC knives from the past five years. Uh, well, this is his wife, and man, she can design a knife too. Uh, this is a, a pretty large, um, I was a 3.6 inch uh, 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 swedged spear point or clip point. Can't tell what that is really, but it's with their version of the axis lock. Uh, they are calling that the, the um, what are they calling that? The um, crossbar lock, kind of a generic name that's, that's kind of a describing name, but uh, an interesting uh, shape nonetheless from her with that double double finger swale and those vents cut out towards the tail end. Um, I'm curious to see how CRKT does the crossbar lock, uh, but that it's called the definitive. It's a 3.7 inch blade. That's a pretty nicely 
sized blade and uh it it will be in g10 and 154 cm i love that blade steel so uh, it's a very usable very easy to sharpen to maintain to keep sharp to get a wicked sharp edge on uh, it keeps its edge pretty well so just a good all-arounder though it is not super uh and next is the lcbk uh from her husband uh matthew lurch and this this shape is really up my alley uh 3.4 inches so right 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 in my wheelhouse or you know on the lower end and uh, just a beautiful um uh sort of worn cliff but a center point worn cliff it reminds me a bit of uh, dirk pinkerton's design the asymmetrical contact uh lcbk lightweight crossbar knife kind of a generic name when you when you break it down but super cool man i, I really like this design 154 cm blade steel and a very light 2.8 inches at least that's light for me uh they're going to be live on the 24th so uh actually they are live <laughs> and uh so go check one of these things out man i might have to do that this is a cool very cool looking knife especially with that uh with that low slung or high slung um worn cliff very cool. Uh, and also, I mean, the reason I'm featuring this in the first place, I do like a family knife story, but really the 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 big part is that it's, these are made in America, which is exciting for CRKT. This, this is where I would love them to go because if they can maintain the affordability of their knives, make them in America with, with better materials, like 154 is a thousand times better than 8CR, at least as far as I'm concerned, um, and they're making them here, that would be awesome. I would start buying crkts again because that might be that might be the only way i can get an mj lurch or a matthew lurch design or a gus Ciccini or anything else you know that they might have to offer so uh there you go that is uh life knife news we got a cold steel giant mayhem folder that i might get i, I think i'll have to get that just as research um and then the uh the two lurch usa made crkts uh coming up on the Knife Junkie Podcast, we'll take a look at a knife that was given away and then given back very graciously, and then great small and medium fixed blade full, uh, knives. If you're a knife junkie, you're always in the market for a new knife, and we've got you covered. For the latest weekly knife deals, be sure to visit the knifejunkie.com slash knives. Through our special affiliate relationships, we bring you weekly knife specials on your favorite knives. Help support the show and save money on a new knife. Shop at thenifejunkie.com slash knives. That's thenifejunkie.com slash knives. And now that we're caught up with Knife Life News, let's hear more of the Knife Junkie podcast. Man, I hate that weekly liner from Knives Ship Free. It is, uh, you know, every week those knives change. And every week I'm like, oh, my God, they have that on special. Uh, but that is uh, the life of a knife junkie. All right, let me show you this. This was a knife. I'm sorry, I got to wipe it down. This was a knife that uh, we gave away in the in the lucky number seven knife giveaway, a knife that was donated to the station, to the station, uh, to the channel by um, Dave of This Old Sword Blade Reviews. Uh, but it was going to Canada. It was Canada bound. And uh, the gentleman to whom... Uh, this was going. Kevin, a very gracious man, said, you know what, Bob, it's going to be such a pain in the butt for you to send that to me here. Uh, you you keep it. You like big knives. It's it's suiting. And uh, so, you know, what am I going to say? No, uh, no, I insist I'm going to send this to Canada. So <clears throat> I didn't. And I am I am very, very grateful. Thank you, Kevin. I'm not going to say your last name here because I didn't didn't uh, get permission but kevin i appreciate you greatly man this is a cool knife and no doubt it will uh find its place in my xl folder collection one two three four five inches of d2 blade steel dagger ground single edged uh you've got this interesting carbon fiber it looks like it's got metal in it it's red uh it has the glass breaker on the back and then this 100% pure camp uh, pocket clip with the skull and the eyes and the screaming face and the teeth. This is a Russian knife. Now, I'm not sure if they make them in China or if they make them in Russia or where they make them, but dagger, double R, 
double G double R is a Russian company and man, they've been blowing up. I've been following them on Instagram and they just keep coming out with really cool new models, uh, doing some interesting things with automatics. I saw that they have one that's like a ringed ringed dagger automatic and you can actuate it, uh, from two positions, there are two sliders, one down by the ring, if you're holding it in reverse grip, and one by the um, by the blade opening, if you're holding it in a standard grip. So very cool stuff happening from Dagger Knives. Um, this one has this secondary lock, which I can't imagine needing because you see how small that lock bar is. It is a stiff lock to undo. So uh, chances are you will never need that secondary lock, especially if you're gripping it up here. But if you decide that you need to have it back here for some sort of standoff uh, in fighting, or say you're trying to cut up something up high and you just need to get that little extra, uh, you you might want to use that. Uh, locks, secondary locks on folders are, are you know, rarely needed in, in my opinion, but sometimes welcome, you know. Uh, rarely are they something that I'm excited about, but in any case, this thing I am excited about. Look at this. it. It is a menacing and kind of, it looks like something a comic book character might carry like a villain. So happy to have this. Thank you very much, Kevin. Greatly appreciate it. And thanks everyone who participated in the lucky number seven giveaway. There will be many more giveaways to come. I think the next thing we're going to give away the next knife is an X2 tracker from um it's a fixed blade knife from off grid really cool knife all right having gotten through the state of the collection which is slim this week uh besides oh did i mention i got this the nova one the new bowie from hogtooth knives and uh the knife junkie did i mention that okay so let's move on to great small and medium fixed blade knives receiving this was what uh was what inspired this because I do have a, a lot of really great knives in that medium uh, and small category, but a lot of them are strictly tactical. A lot of them are small, curvy, double-edged, you know. Uh, these are uh, readily available and are, the knives I'm going to show you are readily available, except for one, but there are many of the same type and brand out there. And um, these are useful for both um edc and tactical if need be um but you know with a with a with an eye more on utility first up is one that i got from my brother-in-law for christmas i have fallen in love with this and actually uh, it was love from afar at first uh, i just had never gotten around to getting it this is the waksahashi waksahachi from Sencut. Uh, i always say civivi and i think even in my notes to jim i said yep i said civivi this is Sencut. This is the new Civivi. Civivi has moved up a notch. Uh, so it's We, Civivi, and Sencut. And Sencut seems to be where they're doing a lot of interesting things. Uh, I think with the with the less expensive knives like uh, like Civivi and now Sencut, they can afford to take more chances and uh, therefore come out with some of the cooler knives in their stable. This, I think, has an, a, a stunning clip point blade. I love that clip point blade. It is very um, reminiscent to me of the Cogent, the first Civivi um, button lock knife, the first button lock knife under the whole Wii umbrella. And it had a clip point blade very much like this, except it did not, it did not curve up on the spine quite as much, but it, it had that sort of um, low slung point with that, with the sort of dramatic clip. This is light and comfortable, man. I love this knife. I am, I am going to dye the handles uh, to a maroon. That seems to be the color that I just go for with knife handles. Um, but I'm going to dye this maroon and I'll, I'll make a video of it because I've never done a writ dye job. I went in to take the handle scales off of this and somehow they are, man, they are just stuck. And I didn't want to, the barrels are stuck. And I didn't want to pound it through. So I'm, I'm going to try again. And if it doesn't work, I'm just going to dunk the whole thing, um, at least the whole handle. And then I'll polish off the, the, the edges here of the handle. But beautiful, very carryable. I just carried this the other day with this in the waistband strap. It worked great, but it, it held the knife up a little bit too high. So I think I'll get a uh, discreet carry for this one 
uh, because I do plan on carrying it. It's a very, very nice and inexpensive fixed blade uh, carry. You know, I talk about I talk about what makes a good fixed blade uh, carry knife, and for me, it has to do with a rounded, shorter handle, thin, um, and not too long a blade, but you know, four four to five inches max five inches uh the the uh the new nova one is three and a quarter so you know small um manageable won't poke into the rib cage because uh, i can carry larger fixed blade knives but i find that throughout the day if it's uncomfortable at all i'll, I'll end up taking it out because you know i don't need something sticking in my ribs and i don't need to be constantly readjusting people don't need to see me constantly readjusting they will they will make assumptions that don't need to be made Okay, next up, um, this one's awesome. This is the Ronin from uh, Spyderco, Spyderco Knives. This is designed by Michael Janich, and this, this particular knife was sent to me by Michael Janich, uh, which was a really, uh, really nice gift, uh, and I really appreciate it. But um, totally apropos because I am in love with the Yojimbo Yojumbo line, and this is the fixed blade version. This is BD1 steel, very slender and uh, more economical than the folding versions. Um, I cannot remember what this costs, but it's definitely less than 100. I think it's less than 85 even. I think it's kind of like a $75 knife. It's very thin, very hollow ground and slicey. It is a, a self-defense knife through and through, but that shape is great for EDC. So, uh, you know, it's like a big, uh, it's like a big exacto knife or a big uh, carpet knife, uh, just in a fixed blade uh, format. So this, I think, works great. It, it was intended as a, um, as a fighting knife or a self-defense knife, but I think it just works great as an all-arounder because of that awesome working, uh, working knife blade shape, that Warren Cliff. Um, just super nice. It's interesting to see how, you know, this knife was less attention was spent on this knife. It is a a inexpensive, b a fixed blade. Um, I, I should say, and b a fixed blade. So you can see how just the buffing process in polishing the edge, they rounded off the uh, this little guard here, and it's not a big deal. And it might even be deliberate, but I just know it's not, and it's fine. It's fine, but it's just interesting to see. Uh, very thin G10 handle scales. This carries great, even in this gigantic pancake sheath. I mean, this thing is just huge. And, and where they could have trimmed it to make it less huge, they didn't. Where they could have moved the grommets closer to the, to the, uh, to the edge, uh, to the imprint, they didn't. And that's fine. It's audacious, uh, but and it works in some of my looser pants. Um, and I'm an old man. I don't do the skinny jeans, but I do have some that fit a little uh, more than others. And uh, and this does not work in that. Uh, so I keep intending to make a Kydex sheath for this, but I can't or not can't. I just haven't. All right. Next up is the old. Uh, it's not old. It's the BPS knives. Uh, this is the HK5. This was also sent to me by the company, uh, a father and son team in Ukraine um, who make these really outstanding no frills outdoors knives. Uh, this has sort of usurped my um, my mora and sent my uh, bush lore packing. I sent I sent I gave my condor bush lore to uh, a work a work friend's son once I got this because I was like, you know, I, I don't really have much of a need for a Scandi outdoor knife like this. And this was much like the Bush lore in that it had a five inch Scandinavian uh, ground blade with an unstabilized wooden handle. So I was like, I don't need two of those now. So I gave the other one away. Uh, this one, man, it is so wickedly sharp. And I do like that it's a clip point. Uh, but this I've featured in a couple of the videos where I'm outside noodling around and it just makes incredible feather sticks. It is an incredible carver. I think in the video, I actually carve the handle of the baton I'm using to, you know, I take a log and carve it down to a nice round shape for me to hold. And this is what I use primarily. 
and it's a really great carving knife. Um, like I said, unfinished handle, but this is 30 bucks or 35 bucks on Amazon. And you're supporting a small business, uh, albeit a small Ukrainian business, but it's cool. You know, I like a, a family knife story, and this is definitely one. Uh, what's the blade steel they use here? It's something, oh, 1066 blade steel made in Ukraine. This thing is awesome. And the high grain leather sheath is, our high grade leather sheath is amazing. It is amazing. And this is not a diss on the knife, but it almost seems to outclass the knife. Uh, it's a very, very nice, supple leather. It's like, I'd love to have a leather jacket made out of this. Uh, maybe a little bit thinner grade, but uh, you know, you could, you could enter the apocalypse with a leather jacket made from this type. And you know, for style, I'd get the white stitching too. All right, so that's the BPS knives HK5. Um, I know that they sent these knives to a number of um, fixed blade knife channels or channels that uh, feature fixed blade knives and um, straight across the board, great, great reviews. And you might say, well, of course they're great reviews. You got sent for free, you, you're on the hook. And yeah, you kind of are, or you can send it back or um, you can use it and be honest if you don't like it, or you could just not make a video. Um, but Everyone seems to think these are great, especially the the greater out the especially the outdoorsmen among us. Also, ninety degree spine if you if you care, uh, it seems to be a good thing to have in a knife like this. Um, also, you can just put it on your belt or dangle it, and this is actually a really nice dangler. You know, I have uh, you know the big um, Wild West buoy from from there. I said it buoy from Cold Steel. Uh, it's about 18 inches on the dangler. I'm like, man, you got to be like 10 feet tall to make this make sense. But a smaller knife on a dangler, I, I, I found I, I like it, especially on that one. <clears throat> Voice cracking, words stumbling. There, it's a picture of my abdominal region. Okay, next up is the Tops Knives Tex Creek. This, I love this knife and also a great pouch leather style sheath pouch meaning you just drop the knife in there it doesn't have straps and stuff retaining it uh this knife i got um because i thought i was going to this is when i when i was going through my making learning about making kydex sheaths i got this thinking i was going to carry this uh you know figure out how to carry this on a daily basis the way i normally carry and discovered that the handle is just too long the blade to handle ratio for this is is not good for my style of daily in the waistband fixed blade carry. Um, I would I would I would want it more like that, you know, to, reduced by an inch on the handle. But uh, man, what a great knife this ended up being for just putting on the belt uh, for a day of chores. Uh, even if you're inside, you know, I always talk about a want, you know, working in the back. Uh, mowing the lawn you know it's, I don't have a huge giant property but I take pride in it so I prune it and stuff and uh, take care of it and I always have a knife on my waist this was the knife for a couple of years uh, I have since moved uh, along to others uh, but this one has seen a lot of use and I don't want to say abuse but accidental abuse for instance I was chopping some vines that uh, cover a chain link fence in the way back and uh, hit a uh, hit the fence on one of the um, the actual poles and took a chip out of that uh, 1095, uh, which was uh, surprising. But I hit it pretty hard, and it was on a pretty uh, narrow uh, surface area. So I I had to sharpen this out. So that this knife has been sharpened to the point where I had where I reduced uh, where I took out a notch right about at the belly. So I took a substantial amount of steel off of it, and it still remains. Uh, in great shape, especially in terms of its, you know, how it cuts. It is a, it is a chunker. It is not a, a, a subtle, thin, slicey knife. This is definitely a good outdoor beater. Um, uh, but one of the very few knives in my collection that actually look like this, where you can see lots of scarring and damage from, from work I've put in. Yes, I was out there putting in work using my knife. So I don't have too many like that because I live a pretty, uh, you know, tame lifestyle here in the suburbs. But uh, I, I'm proud of the work I put into this one. One of the many cool finishes, too, 
that you can get from Topps Knives. I just sent my buddy Ian's uh, Hawks Hellion in for a refurbishment at Topps as a little gift to him. And they were really cool. They sent you, we can put the original black traction coating on or, and then they have like a million different, you know, Cerakotes and different colors and different coatings. And it was really cool. So uh, we went with Cerakote on this one, um, black still, but uh, man, Tops is awesome. And, and when you, when you bang through their knives and you want to have it refurb, you send it back to them. Very reasonable costs uh, for, for these services too. Great, great American company, Tops Knives. And look at this gorgeous. This is another, I'd like to have boots made from this uh, sheath leather. Just gorgeous with the double white stitching and the Tops logo, which I have always thought was cool. That Tops logo. All right. There it is. And uh, with a nice big lanyard on it. Next up is the Off Grid Knives Back Country. Now, this one is pristine. Uh, this is one that Carrie just sent to me uh, to show off the, the um, uh, improvements they've made, especially to the handle of this. Uh, the, I have had three of these. The first one, the Blackout, is out there on a bookshelf, stashed away just in case a, a fight makes it over to that bookshelf and I need it to fight for my life. Uh, but that one has a little bit of scarring from the from the noodling around I did with it outside. That's one that my dad got for me after he saw the first interview with Off Grid. He's like, these knives are awesome. And I like the cut of Jerry's, uh, of Carrie's jib. I'm going to, you know, so he got me one of those and um, great knife. I should have brought it here for this, but, but the handle not as ergonomic, uh, kind of squared off uh, with, you know, slightly contoured, but thick enough that it's squared off. It's not as comfortable and it's got the Anzo um, scoops taken out of it. So it's kind of teeth like, and after a while without gloves, that that older handle, that V1 um, backcountry handle started to bug. So um, he did one change uh, and he sent that to me and that was that was my new one and I loved it. And then he sent this one. They made further improvements on the handle. It is really comfortable. It is uh, it is uh, from the additional contouring and the giant. Um, scooping and um, chamfering they did on these two swales um, <clears throat> the knife has a much smaller dimensional feel uh, north to south as well as uh, east to west so uh, really really great improvement I have not used this one yet uh, for anything but that that one in the middle uh, the coyote version in the middle that had some improvements I gave to my brother-in-law who was over here, I think it was on, it was on Christmas and I was showing this one off to him and I was showing them all three to check them out. And he liked the second one and well, he liked this one best, but I wasn't going to give him that. So I gave him the other knife. It, was, it felt good to do because, uh, they were both gifts to me and, um, uh, my brother, uh, brother-in-law James just loved it so much. I'm like, here, man, take it. I felt like, you know, extra Christmas present plus spreading the word about these awesome knives, especially, uh, this this one to me, I always kind of quip. It's called the Back Country, and I know he named it that uh, so that it could sell on Amazon. But I think it should be called the Back Alley because to me it looks more like a fighting knife. And now in this uh, super comfortable handle setup, yeah, it could it could be. I, I might consider uh, uh, figuring out how to carry this one, though it is a bit heavy for in the waistband carry and a bit large. So, but uh, the sheath is also improved. They went from pancake to taco, which I definitely um, approve of. And then they went from sort of bent over Kydex clip to really nice dangler with nylon and uh, snap. Kind of like you, exactly like you see on cold steel sheaths. So this is the off-grid knives backcountry coyote. Uh, v, they call it V2, but to me it's V3 because... There was, a, or maybe it's V2.5 because there was another improved model in the middle. All right, next up, this is a perennial classic. Perennial? Nah, this is just a classic. And uh, it took me so long to get this knife, even though it's always been inexpensive. And even though I got one for my sister uh, years ago when she had a stalker. Um, sorry, maybe that's too much information. But uh, uh, I got her this, and uh, it it's... Uh, until I made her a knife, it, it was her steadfast companion. Uh, but what a great knife. The Coburn 
Uh, Koban in Japanese means bodyguard. Uh, when they first came out with this, they had a longer version called the Oyuban, I think it was called, which meant boss. So the little, the larger one was the boss. The smaller one was the bodyguard. I have put a, an aftermarket clip on there for very good in the waistband carry. This is a large knife, but it's so thin and contoured and even with the sort of grippy rubberized handles craton handles it carries really nicely let me take it out of the sheath uh, it comes with a boot knife clip that i just immediately got rid of boot knife clips don't grip into the boot because you don't want to ruin the boot so they end up more like walkie talkie clips that very easily come off and i just don't like it so i put this on i don't plan to carry this in my boot anyway it is a, a rather you know large knife at five inches five and a quarter inches long uh deeply hollow ground os 8 still in os 8 no need for much more unless you're using this for something other than bodyguarding uh that very thin coke bottle shaped craton handle just feels great in hand uh, a, a small and understated yet valuable and useful guard made of rubber there um and a very useful Tonto shape. I think Tonto, uh, this sort of Americanized Tonto shape is so typecast as a tactical knife, but these are great utility blades. Tontos are great utility blades. Now you might not get that Warncliffe tip all the way down at the bottom. And that's what a lot of people consider utility um, shape, but you do have that secondary point and that uh, called the Yokot, Yokote, that's this area up here. That secondary point uh, acts like having a worn cliff tip way down there. And then you get the benefit of a long straight edge. In this case, it's slightly curved. Uh, and then that chisel tip. For These are great work knives. You can scrape stickers off your windows with that. You can, you can get through a thick leather jacket with that. You can carve wood with that beautiful um, hollow, hollow ground blade. You can do a lot with these knives. They're not just, they're not just for knife fighting, ladies and gentlemen. The Securex sheath is awesome. Uh, it it maintains the knife, but not so much that it's pulling your pants all the way up to the navel. This one I carry. Uh, this is one of those ones I'll carry when I'm bumming around the house and workout shorts or sweatpants or um, pajama bottoms or whatever. Uh, it's very lightweight. So in that kind of elastic strap, it's barely noticeable. And then when you draw it, of course, I will draw it just for practice and fun. But when you when you draw it, it does not pull your pants all the way up to your nipples, you know. Uh, so uh, good retention, not great retention, but sometimes you don't want great retention. For instance, this has great retention. And in, in a pajama bottom or sweatpants, you're never going to be getting it out without pushing off with the thumb. Okay, so also in that same category as very easy to draw, lightweight, thin, with a classic, classically styled five-inch blade is one of my absolute favorites, is the Spyderco Street Bowie, designed by Fred Perrin. Now, unlike the other Spyderco in this list, um, <laughs> Look at how ridiculously huge that that the sheath is for this. Of, of course, it's a, a slightly broader blade, but it's so big, that footprint. Uh, this footprint, the footprint for the Spyderco Street Bowie sheath is also larger than, than need be, but way more manageable. And this one I can, I can carry without a problem. By the way, I also like this C-clip from Spyderco. This one has gotten here i'm going to put this up to the main to the mic it's got rattle it's loose in there this this knife sheath gets a lot of flack because because it doesn't have some of those things like real tight retention it does rattle it does have a big footprint but i think it's great because this knife is one that you want to be able to access easily um it is kind of it reminds me of a small um in, in the blade, it reminds me of a small trail master, basically. Uh, but you want to be able to access this quickly. This is a self-defense knife primarily. That's what this, you know, that's what it's marketed for and designed for. Uh, you've got this deep finger groove here, which uh, is not semicircular. It is uh, straight on this side and angled on this side, which which angles the blade in a more aggressive uh, 
at a more aggressive angle to the knuckles. Uh, it also stops you from sliding forward onto the blade. Fred Perrin, the designer, is a former French commando and general badass, and he takes um, he takes design inspiration from classical or from classic French fighting knives, which, to my eye, uh, look a bit like chef's knives. You know, the uh, the the blade is broader than the handle, and the blade itself acts as the guard. It's not like a cross guard that you see on a Bowie or something like that. And that comes down through his um, other designs. I have a, I have a one of his neck knives. It's a similar setup, and um, you know he's got the uh, subway coming out, or it is out, and that has the same setup. And that's just a Fred Perrin thing, signature design, and I love it. This knife is super light. That's VG10 blade steel that you can just get screamingly sharp. And then this, I've been throwing. You know, I've been doing a bit of knife throwing. And uh, I've done a bit of no spin up close throwing. So within 10 feet, you know, and you throw it like this and it has no spin, comes off your hand like this. And you kind of massage, you brush, you brush the spine with your forefinger as it leaves. And if you're within, you know, 10 feet or so and you really whip it hard, it chunks right in. Uh, it's got a, you can see the tip. It's got a great blade shape for it. And I like knowing that this little knife that I carry around with me, um, you know, as my never unarmed protection, uh, sometimes I like knowing that it's a good thrower, even with a uh, even with a little happy little fob on it. So I put the uh, I put this double knotted fob on there when I was walking the dog. I would for a while I was regularly walking the dog in a in a close by woods at 5 a.m. And I stopped doing that because I got to be honest, it was spooky, man. The woods at night are different. And 5 a.m. is may as well be the night. It's when and, and everything is starting to stir. And uh, and the dog was all fitful. And we, we changed our habit. Uh, and um, we don't walk there now in the in the dark. Uh, but the this fob was there for easy grab because of course I would practice because I'd be nervous walking along in the dark. I'm like anything that can see better in the dark than I can, which is just about everything is can see me right now. It's probably watching me. What is out there? And so I would practice drawing the knife just in case. And you know, I'm thinking MS 13 more than anything else. Uh, but uh, I had this, fob i put that fob on there just so that my hand wouldn't slip off and if i missed that first knot i would catch the second knot and even if i have the knife in my hand like this i can readjust that's that's better so i did that for that reason and i like the happy happy uh bright pink and teal knot on there next to that blue uh, next to that black blade um Yep, I don't recommend anyone go into the woods without anything on you, like knife or firearm. If you're going deep in the woods, that's, I don't know, man. I've been hearing some stories. There are bears, black bears apparently are really dumb and can get quite, <laughs> uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm not an outdoorsman, but it makes me feel better to have that street bowie on my uh, on my hip. All right, next up is the Doug Ritter. This is the RSK Mark III. This is the Hogue Ritter uh, fixed blade. And what an awesome fixed blade this is. And I, I'm starting again with the sheath. These all have that in common, great sheaths. Because you can't have a great fixed blade knife without a great sheath. Uh, the power behind the throne, if you will. Uh, and on the backside, you have these different ways of attachment. You've got these two straps uh, that unsnap. And you can put it over your belt or they unsnap doubly and you can uh, molly it. Um, you know, if you if you unsnap this and unsnap that, feed it through lo uh, molly, you can uh, the molly loops. You can have it on like that. It's got a very, very sturdy inner here. And then this Cordura is like high, 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 um, high quality Cordura uh, nylon here. They give you quite a length of, uh, I don't think this is, yeah, I guess it's 550. And then one of these uh, pinch pinch clamps. But here's the knife, man. What a great knife at, what is this? About five inches. Uh, evoking the shape of the vaunted MSK Mark I, or RSK Mark I, 
uh, folder, the famous, famous folder that started life as the Benchmade uh, uh, Ritter Griptilian and then now is manufactured by Hogue. Well, they're making this fixed blade, and man, it's great. Very thin, high, high, high height, uh, flat grind. As a matter of fact, with this hump, it, it's practically a full height <laughs> hollow grind. Um, you're going to you're going to have uh, a, a very easy time keeping this knife sharp and free of corrosion with that S45 VN. This is my only knife with S45 VN. It's very slicey, but quite robust. If you look at the spine, you'll see you have a pretty much a full full thickness till uh, right about half inch to the tip. Um, and so it is light, but quite robust, I would say. And has, uh, again, this has done a little bit of backyard duty, but I have never batoned with this or done much uh, tough hard work with this. I, I, I feel intuitively like it would take it on uh, with a plum, but I, I just haven't put it through those paces. I've been a little precious with this knife, I must admit. Um, but it's got the beautiful radial, uh, radial milling on the handle that you see in the, in all of the Hogue era, uh, Ritters. See that? Oh, it's so nice. It's like a sunburst radiating from either the pivot or in this case, that first, um, bolt. Wonderful ergonomics. And you know it's wonderful because I, I never use the word wonderful. So really, really great ergonomics uh, in this saber grip. You've got that ramp that feels great. Um, but really, this one to me is like more of a carving knife, more of a knife where you're going to be doing a lot of these push push kind of cuts and and uh, kind of pull chest pull cuts and stuff like that. Great outdoors and camp knife. I think this would excel in the food prep area, too. Uh, you're going to get a lot done with this. But that's the whole point of these RSK uh, knives, RSK, Ritter Survival Knife, RSK. So uh, Doug Ritter being a former, well, not former, being a helicopter pilot. Uh, I don't think he flies much these days, but uh, he started off his career in kni knives and knife making. This is way before knife rights, which he uh, which he runs and created and and has basically saved us all. Uh, all us knife junkies. But uh, before he was doing any of that, he was flying helicopters and creating um, uh, survival kits uh, meant for air airplanes and and uh, and uh, helicopters. And and key to that is lightweight. So he was really hell bent on designing a folder that had premium steel and then an inexpensive handle. That's how the Griptilian. Uh, that's how the Ritter Griptilian was born. Uh, so those Ritter Griptilians always had a much higher grade steel than the than the regular um, and a different blade, obviously, than the regular Griptilians of the time. And then he made a number of other fixed blades in the past. But this is the one that is now uh, carrying the torch as lightweight fixed blade, fully capable survival knife. And no doubt if you needed to fight with this, this would be great for that because it's light and nimble and it's got a pretty decent point and a very sharp and slicey blade. But. It doesn't uh, scream that. All right, so I'm going to put this back in the really excellent sheath, and I like the I like the billboarding on the sheath. Doug Ritter, I'm happily, I happily, proudly carry around his name like that. He's a cool dude, and has done great stuff for us. Okay, second to last in this list is a. Uh, this is an example that I have. I probably it is unavailable, but there is always a number of knives like this from this company available. Uh, and that company is Bark River Knives. I love Bark River Knives. And I have a couple of their big bowies. I have the Boone 2. Um, and then I have, which is a larger medium size fixed blade knife. Not, not for this list. This is the Mini Bush Sax. And it is a one, two, three. I should have done this before. Three and three quarters inch Warncliffe. Oh, man, it's awesome. And it's got this beautiful micarta handle. Uh, Coke bottle, uh, olive shaped micarta or olive shaded micarta handle with the red liners, just the beautiful craftsmanship, A1 tool steel, beautiful craftsmanship that you expect from Bark River Knives with a um, really sharp, sorry, that was unnecessary, with a very sharp uh, apple seed edge or um, convex edge. This A1 steel, however, A2, A2 tool steel does not 
take a um a good patina i have found or at least it doesn't take a good forced patina i tried to uh, force the patina on this with a vinegar and it just it came out blotchy and botchy and it looked terrible so i polished it off but couldn't quite polish it all off so if you if you see the surface of this and think it looks a little janky well that's because i messed it up but a really sharp acute point this is a i got this of course as you know i'm sure as a little self-defense knife but it's it's meant as a little bush knife and i think it would be great for that uh, i don't know about the point though the point seems like it's a little acute for bush tasks whatever those are but so maybe you folks out there who love fixed blades and have way more experience uh in the bush than i could tell me why how that tip would come in handy uh in in a uh, you know bushcraft situation uh, for me, I know how it would come in handy for a self-defense situation. And I carry this one. I, I made this Kydex sheath. This one comes with a beautiful uh, leather, full grain leather pouch sheath that this very acute tip went through the through the bottom of. So I had to uh, do a little fix on that like I had to recently that I showed off with the JB uh, knife and tool um, ditch pick. Uh, but this one, you'll see i i carry it oriented uh differently usually i carry them tip down edge forward this one i carry tip down edge back a more traditional style of carry that's so that if i if i draw it in reverse grip i can have it more pickle oriented and of course if i'm doing that and i just need the knife to cut a bagel which is probably what i'm going to use it for i just simply turn it in my hand it's easy just turn it in my hand. Uh, but if I do need to draw quickly and use it uh, in a self-defense situation, heaven forbid, uh, and of course that's never happened to me, knock on wood, uh, it would be oriented properly for, for my purpose with this knife, for my use. Uh, but a beautiful job. I love Bark River knives. I would love to have a huge sub-collection of them, but they tend more towards the bush and the, and the, and the camping and the outdoorsy and uh, so it's easy for me to shy away from most of their designs, even though I have a profound appreciation for them and love all the different handle styles. Uh, so when they come out with a knife, uh, when they do a run of knives, they they come in a range of prices because they come in a range of handle materials. I would love to have Mike Stewart on this show. Uh, I've reached out before and I'm gonna try again. He seems like a really great character. Uh, Okay, last up in this list might surprise you because it is a $15 knife, but I love it. And I've no, I, I knew a guy who swore by it living on the road and camping for about three years straight. And this was his only knife besides a Swiss Army knife. And that is the Cold Steel Roach Belly. Uh, this Cold Steel Roach Belly is, is wearing the first sheath I ever made of uh kydex and it's a pretty awesome sheath if i do say so myself um, but this is a dedicated car knife this is my uh car cockpit fixed blade i have a fixed blade in the back that's bigger and more capable but this roach belly at 16 bucks and a cheap um plastic sheath mine came with a cheap cordura sheath or uh, nylon and now they have it in a more kydexy thing uh but this simple cheap knife and 4116 krupp steel uh is really all i would need in a fixed blade um it is uh you know uh, besides a big chopper or something like that it is a very capable five inch hollow ground blade the the cheap 4116 Kruppstahl works beautifully and keeps a really good edge for a cheap steel you know cold steel man they they can get every last ounce of hardness out of their inexpensive steels they do great with heat treat uh this one i took and i i put uh, my own little uh, grooved pattern in the handle and that's how it was for a long time and then when i got obsessed with uh jute cord i got some jute cord and wrapped it on there and shellacked it uh, i love the way that feels in hand um so this this is an inexpensive enough knife that you can feel free to make adjustments. I would like to get a, another one of these. I think I may have mentioned this before. I just never have gotten around to it. But I'd love to get another one of these and then bevel, put a secondary bevel. Of course, it would change the overall profile 
of the the knife but i think this would be a really cool one as a double-edged blade so i might try that because if i jack it up it's 16 dollars gone and a lot of knowledge gained you know you don't lose you learn that kind of thing uh so yeah this this is a knife that i i highly recommend this is a a, a no commitment but very high reward knife um, that is the roach belly and not for nothing. It's kind of cool looking. And uh, if you did need this uh, as a fighting knife, it would be awesome. So thin and slicey and quick and light and hideable. And, uh, and at the, with that bulbous handle, it really fits the hand nicely. And uh, you've got the sort of blade guard, as I mentioned before, i.e. the blade itself being the guard, um, as I mentioned with the parent style. And then you have the bulb in the back, keeping it, keeping it in hand all for 16 bucks and uh yours to customize i uh, highly recommend that knife okay so thank you very much for coming along uh the great small and medium fixed blades avenue with me uh these are great knives that uh, can can flex from daily carry to camp to self-defense if need be um, but they are not those dedicated self-defense knives that i love showing off and have shown off so much so Check these out. Uh, it's the Waxahashi, the Ronin, the HK5, the Tex Creek, the Backcountry, the Coben, the Street Bowie, the RSK Mark III, the, the Mini Bush Sacks, or any small Bark River knife, and the Cold Steel Roach Belly. And as you can see, I went from very expensive or somewhat expensive with the Bark River knives to barely any money spent with the with the cold steel. So a knife in this category can be had for any cost. All right. That's it. Uh, join us again next week for uh, a midweek supplemental where we will dive deep into a knife subject. And, uh, and then Thursday night knives, of course, 10 PM Eastern standard time right here on Facebook, YouTube, or Twitch. And um, Sunday for the interview, man, thanks for this uh, joining me for this struggle. Scan the QR code to become a patron. And please join me in thanking Jim for working his magic behind the switcher. I'm Bob DeMarco saying until next time, don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, thenifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at thenifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on thenifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at thenifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at thenifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487 and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Podcast.